So welcome back everybody. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about one important thing that I've not covered in any of the other videos thus far, which is use of airfoils in OpenBSP. So I'm going to start just by adding a generic wing. And then we control the airfoils by the airfoil tab in the wing browser. So this airfoil section part of this is just telling us which airfoil in this wing we're actually modifying. We only have one wing section, but we've got two separate airfoils. We've got a root airfoil and a tip airfoil. And right now we know that by this bold red curves here that we have the root airfoil selected. To get to the tip we just simply hit the next arrow over. So now we know we're working with one. So it starts at zero and it goes up from there. If we continue to add sections you'll have even more control. Uh, so now we know that we're out at the tip because now this is highlighted with the red curves. OpenVSP is very powerful in that it makes adding and modifying airflow is very easy. So they do have built in there are different shapes here, so this is for creating different components. Like if you want to add landing gear, you need a strut. Um, you can use a circle or an ellipse uh, for fairings, things of that nature. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to be concerned primarily with 4 series, 6 series, and this AF file selection. I'll end on this one, but right now let's stick with the 4 series. So what this means is that we're working strictly within NACA series airfoils. And these are going to be the most popular ones you encounter. So that's actually really helpful for us. So there's a lot of different airfoils out there and it can get quite, quite complex with the nomenclature. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible uh, for you guys. And we're going to jump over to a website and I'll put a link to this page in the YouTube description. And this is a, the incomplete guide to airflow usage. So if, when you're doing your research of all your different uh, competing aircraft in your same category, you're going to want to look at this list and see, well, what other aircraft using as their airfoils? Uh, if I was trying to create a new wing design for a general aviation aircraft and I want it to be a six seat cross country airplane, what I'm going to do is look at similar aircraft. So one aircraft that currently exists that would fall in that category would be a Beechcraft Bonanza. So if I search for a Bonanza, I'm going to look at like a Beech 36 Bonanza. It tells me what the root and the tip, this column is the root and then this is the tip airfoil usage for these aircraft. So they're using a NACA 230 series airfoil, uh, but they are different from the root to the tip because the thickness of the wing changes from the root to the tip. The camber doesn't change, but the thickness of it does. So it goes from a 16.5% thickness down to a 12% thickness. And so we would just kind of repeat that for other aircraft that we have in our list. and see which one seems appropriate to use in our wing design. We can also do that in reverse on the same page. If we know that we want to use a Clark Y, which is another popular airfoil for general aviation and uh, experimental aircraft, I can search for that and just run through and see what aircraft actually use that. So I would highly recommend spending some time here and becoming familiar with names of the airfoils and what type of aircraft use them. Okay, so let's say you did your research and you decided that you wanted to use a NACA 2412 airfoil. So that's a 4 series airfoil, so we've got that selected already. And we'll see this NACA uh, airfoil name change live as we alter these parameters. So. These last two numbers refer to the thickness of the airfoil. Currently it's uh, 0.1. And if we're going for the 2412, we want that to be 0.12. Okay, so now we've got that. So the first number here is referring to this camber. The second number is referring to the camber location. So to get a 2 here, 
within camber, we're actually going to put in 0 0.02. And then our location, we're going to put 0.4. So now we have a NACA 2412, and that's at the tip. You'll notice here that uh, the airfoil is actually inverted, and that's just simply because this checkbox is selected. So if we unselect that, uh, it got rid of that uh, inverted airfoil. So that's what we want. And if now let's say we want to have a NACA 2415 for the root, which would make sense because we expect the root thickness to be greater than the tip thickness. So we're going to go to the root cord by hitting that back arrow. Now that's highlighted. And we're just going to have to do the same thing here. So we know that our thickness now is going to be 15%, 0.15. Camber is going to be 0 0.02. And this is going to be 4. So now we've got 2415. And you can see that it updates this automatically for you as well. Your NACA 6 series airfoils are going to be basically prescribing an ideal CL or your lift coefficient. And so that's going to update this third number. So if you have a 63215, for example, we're going to put 0.2 in and it'll update that and modify the airfoil accordingly. Okay, so the last thing we might want to do is if you're not working with a 4 or 6 series or even a 5 series, we're going to be using an airfoil file. So right now we don't have a file to read in, so we're going to have to go fetch that. Uh, as you can see, it's putting a, looks like a circle as the default for that. All right, so we're going to go back to this page, but uh, after doing research now, we've decided that we wanted to use a Clark Y airfoil. So how do we get that? Well, let's at the top of this page, let's go back to the UIUC airfoil data site, and I'll also create a link for this in the description of this video. And they've got a coordinate database. And because I know I want to use a Clark Y airfoil, I'm going to hit uh, a C. And now we have them all here. So we've got a Clark Y if we want to look at and verify and see what the airfoil actually looks like. We just hit on that uh, image file here. Here's a GIF. Uh, so yeah, that's the one we want. So then we can get the file from here. So if you click on it, it's going to open this. And this is actually what we're looking for. This is just uh, the ordinates uh, for this particular airfoil. And it typically comes in a .dat format. So I'm actually just going to right click and save this. I'm going to save it as a Clark Y to my downloads. And I'm going to force it to save as a .dat because that's what's going to be recognized by OpenVSP. Go back to OpenVSP. I'm going to hit read file. And I'm going to navigate to that file that I just downloaded. So that's in my downloads. There it is. Hit accept. Now you can see we've got that Clark Y, Clark y airfoil in our wing. So that's a great tool to use to grab any airfoil that you need and quickly get it into your 3D model. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about uh, before concluding this airfoil tutorial is refining the shape of this. Right now we're zoomed out pretty far so it looks really good uh, but we want to make sure that because we're 3D printing these in the future that we don't get a blockiness uh, in the shape of the airfoil. And so to make this easier for you guys to see I'm going to actually get rid of the symmetry all right, and I'm going to shade it as well. All right, so now as we zoom in, now we're starting to see that, okay, this nice smooth curvature of the airfoil doesn't look so smooth anymore, right? I'm starting to see lines, and especially at the leading edge of a wing, you 
you don't, this is not going to be very aerodynamic. So to deal with this, it's pretty easy. We just have to go to the general tab and we're going to modify the tessellation. So this num w, we want to increase. So right now it's at 41 and I'm going to put this back to wire. So that means that we have from the leading edge to the trailing edge 41 of these lines that's defining that shape. So we need to increase that so we have more lines to define this curvature. So if I put this at let's say 99 you can see now we have a lot more to define the shape and as you can see it's we've got a much smoother curve here. But we can even do better than this because we know that just by look, looking at this that we have way more curvature here than we do back here. This is fairly straight so we actually want to skew these lines towards the leading edge and the trailing edge was less here. So to control that we just go back to the plan tab and under tessellation control here we have leading edge clustering and trailing edge clustering. So watch what happens as I adjust this. So as I go further, slide it further to the left, we have greater clustering of these lines at the leading edge. Similarly, the trailing edge, we want to go back. So we're right around somewhere about 0 0.08. So if I set 0 0.08 for both of those, we can see we still have enough clustering here to define this shape well but now if we really zoom in we've got to zoom in pretty far before we start to see these straight lines show up again so that's probably enough uh, for this particular wing and if we turn the shading back on even when we zoom in, we can see we've got a nice smooth curve so that's something that we want to pay attention to it's doesn't seem to be very important now, but especially when you ex start exporting it in order to 3D print it, you want your prints to turn out uh, visually good as well. So this is going to help to ensure that that happens. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you all and get you started in getting your airfoils into your wing designs. If you guys have any other questions or struggles with this, just comment below and I'll do my best to uh, keep up with you guys and answer your questions.